Hello everyone, this is Robert with eGauge Systems, and in this video we're going to be installing an EG3000 in a three-phase distribution panel. This is more of a commercial installation, so if you're looking for a split-phase or residential installation, look at our split-phase video. It goes over how to install an EG3010 into a split-phase panel. A couple notes about this installation. Since this will be a commercial installation, we're not going to install the E-Gauge unit inside the panel. We're going to install it in a separate enclosure outside the panel. A couple things to keep in mind. The max voltage from line to neutral of the E-Gauge is 277 volts AC. In addition, it can accept up to a 4800 amp current sensor. We do have 12 CT inputs along this edge, so effectively you could use this for four three-phase systems. This panel is typical of what you'd see in a small commercial application. This is a three-phase 200 amp panel. The E-gauge measures all three phases corresponding to L1, L2, and L3. So we need to make sure that we're measuring all three phases and not just a single phase. So we can't just go plugging the E-gauge into wherever we want. The phases that you see up here correspond to the breakers down here. They start at the top, so it would be like blue, red, black, blue, red, black, and they skip every third one. So we need to make sure that we're hitting each one of the phases. When you connect these, make sure you note which one is on L1, which one's on L2, and which one is on L3 in your installation manual. The first step to installing the E-gauge is to mount the enclosure. We're using this little enclosure, but we have a lot of different options on the website, so you can check that out for all the different options we have. But this is just kind of a standard enclosure that fits the E-gauge. We have a piece of DIN rail pre-mounted, and we have some DIN rail clips on the E-gauge itself. And we've went ahead and drilled a hole on the side, which corresponds to our knockout up here on the panel. And we're going to be using one of these couplers to connect the two together. Here I've got an E-gauge power whip. It's eight foot pre-wired, so all we need to do is feed it through this um, little junction that we made, go down here, connect it into the breakers, and then we leave this terminated end at the bottom for the E-gauge to plug into. When you're connecting the power whip, make sure that you leave enough length to connect to the breakers. As we mentioned before, it is a good idea to take note of which wire is going into which phase at this point. It is very important that you connect to the neutral line in this setup. If you do not have a neutral, please refer to the Delta configuration guide. We're going to be using three CTs, one for each phase, to measure the current going through our panel. And the E-gauge can have 12 CT inputs. It's really happy when all of these are filled up, so make sure that you get all the CTs you need for your installation. This can handle up to 12, so in theory you could have four three-phase systems being measured by each E-gauge. So we're just going to go ahead and attach the CTs. Here's our CT. This is a 16 millimeter or 0.63 inch inner diameter for the opening. And as always, be sure to face the arrow towards what you're measuring, which is back to the utility. So we're just going to take these guys, snap them around, and make sure they fully close in place and it's fully latched. And we're going to do this for all three phases.
The CTs come with a six foot length of wire. You can keep this as is and bundled up inside your panel, or you can cut it to length. The option's up to you. We are going to just leave it this length for this demonstration, and we're gonna feed it through this hole where the E-gauge is gonna live, and then we're gonna plug it into the E-gauge. I'm gonna feed through the ends of the CT through this little conduit here. Give it just enough length. We can clean this up later. One of the nice benefits to using a DIN rail is you can make all your connections outside the enclosure and then just snap in the E-gauge afterwards. So we generally like using a DIN rail and the um, DIN rail clips for the E-gauge. So I'm going to connect the power on the bottom and it just snaps into place, make sure it's fully on there. And then we're just going to connect the CTs. You can connect these anywhere onto the E-gauge, just make sure you remember which one goes in which spot because this will be important for the setup later on. And as always, make sure they press in firmly. Now that that's done, we just need to clip the E-gauge into place with the DIN rail clips. One of the primary differences between the EG3000 and the EG3010 is the network connectivity options. For the EG3000, it is Ethernet only. For the EG3010, it uses powerline communications as well as Ethernet. For commercial applications, we definitely recommend going with EG3000 because hardwired Ethernet connection is always much more reliable. Another thing to note, when installing the E-gauge, another nice benefit of the DIN rail clips is you can easily clip out the E-gauge when you forget to attach the ethernet cable as we did in this video. So we're gonna clip this out, attach the ethernet cable. Now that we have the ethernet cable installed on the EG3000, we can plug it into our local area network via a switch or a router. If you don't have access to a local area network, you can use a couple different devices. For Wi-Fi, we have a Wi-Fi bridge or access point that can connect it to a Wi-Fi network. If you don't have access to a Wi-Fi network, we even have a cellular router that can connect to most major cellular carriers for data access. Of course, data charges will apply to that. For both of those devices, we have a larger enclosure called the Powered Enclosure Kit, which gives you a receptacle and 120 volts AC to plug those devices into. So there's a few different connectivity options if you don't have access to local ethernet. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of what's involved in installing an EG3000. Check the video description for more tutorials and tips and tricks.